this is Indie Gospel Revealed, pure music, pure art, pure sound emerging from the underground. And I'm here today with Marcus Anderson. Good afternoon to you. Hey, good afternoon, Kimberly. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Again, thank you for asking. And let me send my condolences to you and, and thoughts for losing such a music mentor uh, like Prince. Um, I know you've been interviewing as well all weekend, so you're probably exhausted. But where were you when you found out, and what were your initial reactions? Uh, I was with my band, and we were standing on the balcony, just admiring the, uh, the scenery of the room, because we were playing a festival down in Florida at the Seabury Center. And we just, you know, my and God's like, you know, talking about how great everything was, and I got a call from Minnesota, you know, and it was uh, several calls from Minnesota, so I answered it, and they said something going on in Paisley, and I got confused about it. And first I didn't believe it, I was like, no, it's a, you know, they're, they're jumping the gun on this, like, this can't be true. Right. But uh, in fact, it was. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't news that I don't think anyone wants to hear. Understood. Understood. And you... Um, have you been in contact with the band? Are y'all, y'all, do y'all have any plans coming up as far as how you're going to commemorate? And or is it still too early? Yeah, it's still kind of early for that. We've just been trying to be supportive of one another. Um, ironically enough, two of the guys that tour with Prince were in the same uh, city at the same festival. And we actually got to pay a tribute to Prince uh, during my set at the festival. You know, it just seems right to do because uh, Prince was a man that always loved the music. He always made about right. So that's exactly what we did. You know, we thought like like Prince, like what did he do? Mm-hmm. You know, he was just he would just play music because music is a healing entity mm-hmm. that really brings people into a place of tranquility to where they can have a peace of mind and take away a lot of pain and they have a musical healing abilities, you know, so that's what we did. We gave healing to the people at the festival because it wasn't just us that we heard it, you know, it was the whole world, it was people at the festival, you know, they really felt it, and I believe they felt, you know, healed from it. Yeah, I think that was a great idea, and no wallowing for you, just just commemorating him the best way possible. Yeah, yeah. How did you get connected with Prince? Initially, um, it was by God because I was filling in for my mentor in California at a, just a jam session, and you know every week jam session. And the guy at the time was working with Prince, but I don't think he had really told anyone what he was doing. He had just been flying back and forth to Minnesota working with Prince, and I didn't know at the time. And he heard me play, and I just kind of did what you know did what I do, and he enjoyed it. And ironically enough, Prince had just asked him, hey, do you know any of the coming young saxophone players? And he didn't really know, I guess, too many at the time. But then when he saw me, he felt the need to send Prince one of my YouTube videos. Prince saw it. He loved it. He thought it was amazing. You know, what was told to me is that, like, Prince loves you. And he wants to fly you to Minnesota. And I I was kind of thinking back, like, um, okay, cool. But cool, like, they had to really explain to me they were talking about Prince, like Purple Rain Prince. <laughs> and, I, and I just, I really, I couldn't believe it. I really, I couldn't believe it. Like, I really, I'm still in disbelief to this day. Like, it feels like, like it happened, but it was like a dream because something like that, I only dreamed about. But your playing, your playing skills and endeavors, it, it was, it was taking you there that whole time. And still taking yeah. them. Well, I mean, it was really God that's really been taking me to a lot of these mm-hmm. places because, um, like, there's so many great musicians in the world that play circles around me. But the, the great thing about Prince, he sees something in each individual that, okay, I like that. You know, Beautiful. whether it's my playability, whether it's my spirit, whether, you know, he knew we would, we would connect musically, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it was, he dug it, and he wanted it a part of his band. And I was... I was thankful. As a musician, I love to hear that. Thank you for that piece of information. You're welcome. Um, 
I heard that he had like that if you were to play with Prince, you had to be ready for any of those songs. Is that true? It was somewhere around that number. I don't know if it was 300 exact. Um, I only had to learn about 150. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, 300, because it, uh, it was a lot of music. What were some you of the know? places you, you played with him? You said some of the places? Yeah, where was where were some of the places? I I know that we watched you on Arsenio Hall. I was watching you there. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know the Arsenio Hall show with it's Switzerland and the Monster Jets. We did uh, London. We did uh, Curacao. We did uh, the Welcome to America tour. You know, uh, with Detroit, Chicago, uh, DC. We did the White House. You know, we did LA. Wow. You know, so there's so many different places, you know, that we got to play with him, that we jammed with. Do you remember that one, was there at least one time that he told you something that, that uh, resonated with you that you can't, you won't ever forget or that took, uh, caused a paradigm shift with you? Yeah, it was one um, I always considered myself, I, had, I could play, but then like when it came to playing solo, I always felt like I had to play as much as I can in a short period of time. And I mean, he said, Marcus, you know, you can take your time with your solo, solo you have all night. You know, the people aren't going anywhere. And he said, think about it like this. Think about your solo as being a boxing man. And he kind of put his hands up and kind of did a little shaking motion. And then he kind of just looked at me and started his shoulders. And that was all I needed. Wow. You know, and then he kind of went into like a little explanation after that, but it was like, I got out, like, I totally see what you're saying. And ever since then, I don't find that method to my playing and when I think so long. I don't have to rush. You know, I don't need to try to impress anyone. I just need to play the music instead of letting the music play me. Mm. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm very interested to know where you're going from there. Now, we, we in South Carolina... We would we would know you as Alpheus's brother, the Stellar Heart, Stellar Award winning children's choir, Pure in Heart. That's how we know you. But you're you're way beyond that. You're international. Uh, tell us tell us about your albums and your works. How many albums do you have now? Um, I just released released my eighth album uh, in March, March twenty fifth, entitled My Inspiration, and uh, this album is what I use to show my Christian background, my upbringing yeah. in the church, and what also that inspired me in the world. So, two songs on the album were written for my daughters. I have two little girls, two very beautiful little girls named Layla and Carson. Awesome. Yeah, so <clears throat> they are, I would say, I would say they were the bulk of what I used to drive myself to try to be a successful musician and a successful businessman because I use that to create determination and self-determination. I don't allow anyone to say, well, Marcus, you got to do this, you got to do that. I kind of take offense because uh, I don't need like someone else to kind of push me because I like to just motivate myself because if I do allow that, it can sometimes make you weak and sometimes people depend on that and they thrive on that and then they look for the uh, the affirmation of like other people. So I didn't want to fall into that trap. So I try mm -hmm. to be very careful when someone says, well, Marcus, you should do this. Well, you need to do that. It's like, and it's like I, I, I have a vision because God gave me a vision and I know what it is I need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, my fuel for that is my girls, you know, because I have to make it happen for them. I have to set up a, a great future for them. You know, and I want to live a good life as well. So, you know, that's, you know, about the, uh, I guess, the behind the scenes for my inspiration. It's a little, little deeper than what I explained on the CD. But, uh, yeah. And where, where can we find it? You can find it on iTunes, Amazon, or on my website, marcusanderson.net. Um, if they buy it from my website, I always sign all of my CDs and I send it out with a photo, you know, just saying thank you and all that. Marcus, thank you so much for your time and sharing that with us. That that's so 
that it's gracious of you and I've got so much from that interview. Thank you for the nuggets again as another musician. And I you know, again, condolences to you, safe travels to you. Look to hear a lot more from you, okay? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak with me.